Okay, uh, thank you, Scooter. Um, yeah, let's dive right into it. So let's begin where to get networks. So I highly recommend the Index platform because, well, what can you do there? You firstly find some networks up there already and you can store your own networks there. And well, in the beginning they are private, so you might share it only with certain people um, or certain groups and work on it. And if you decide uh, to publish your work, you might not already publish your networks. So uh, you can create the shareable link and provide it along your manuscript and reviewers can watch your data. And if it's finally accepted, you can make the networks public. That sounds really cool. And you can reference the networks along in different databases. So um, there will be a poster today. Um, I guess the poster number is 254 if you have more questions on index. Uh, it's not by me. So. <laughs> um, and of course, there are a lot of tools already, like it has an integration in Cytoscape and some other tools like the Python client. And um, myself, I'm in a statistical department, so I'm working heavily with R. So we did an R client. So what can you do there? You can use within R, uh, access the index platform, uh, download networks, do some fancy stuff in R, and upload it again to index, and a lot of stuff more. And um, if you have your data in R, well, uh, let's talk a little bit about the data structure. So index using the Cytoscape uh, infrastructure exchange format, which is uh, aspect oriented JSON format. And we adapted it in R and it's quite suitable for working with it. And well, we also added a conversion to this RCX graph, which is a slightly extension to the iGraph. Uh, you might come along if you're working in R, so you know, there is already a lot of tools using it and for network analysis or visualization. Um, so speaking of visualization, well, you most likely know already Cytoscape, maybe before the conference or one of the tutorials or right now. And it's an open source cross-platform um, software for visualizing networks and it's pretty quite neat. And it has a lot of apps which can extend the functionality and uh, it's backed up by a lot of institutes. So uh, it's really nice to work with. And it also offers a REST API and of course, R packages. So Alex spent a lot of work recently in this R size three package, um, which makes it really easy to um, visualize your networks using Cytoscape um, that remotely from R. So uh, on the right, you see uh, basic visualization using iGraph. So it doesn't look very neat. It's just a simple approach, but if you're using Cytoscape, well, it looks a lot better. If you wanna know a little bit more, I gave recently a talk about that, how to use NXR and um, uh, Cytoscape to visualize networks. Uh, you can find it on that um, address, and that's the slides and also on R Markdown where you can try it on your own. So um, now I got how to visualize the networks. But um, again, sharing is caring. And I work at uh, uh, University Medical Center. So medical informatics have a lot of standards. And one of the uh, reasonably most prominent one is this HLI-7 FIRE. So fast healthcare interoperability resources. And well, um, they're composed of modular components and that resemble pretty neat the um, CX or RCX data structure. So I thought, hmm, sharing is caring. Let's try it out. Is the, and I did this fire graph, which is like adaption to the um, RCX and fire trade-off thingy. And well, why do I need for? We want to publish our work in, uh, integrate our work into uh, hospitals. So they're depending on standards. So that might be useful. So I talked a lot about different tools, but putting it together. So uh, you can incorporate all the tools in different dockers, which makes it really easily because they're not dependent on different software installations anymore. You can isolate them in between and just a uh, short excerpt of what I'm currently uh, doing on our servers, like uh, 
getting a pathway import from index or maybe React Home if you want. Um, um, incorporate in your own installation of index, which is possible, or in most cases, in some cases, it might be possible that you not um, access the public server. So that might be useful. And then connect some RStudio Docker to it so people can work with it. Uh, connect a visualization with Cytoscape with it. Um, uh, integrate it in the healthcare system. And in the end, wrap it all around a nice website so people can actually watch it. So that's just a brief overview of what I'm doing. So if you have more questions, please visit me at my poster. It's the number 212 today. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Let's thank all three of the quick speakers again, those fast speakers. It's really a challenge. If you haven't given a five-minute talk, it's really hard. It's, it's you know, a one-minute talk, you can really throw a lot of things out. A 10 or 15-minute talk, you know what to put together, but five minutes right in that really difficult zone. Um, okay, so it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Trey Eidecker. I was trying to think about how to introduce Trey um, and to an audience that probably knows him and his work much better than I do. And I started listing all of the things that I know about in terms of things that I worked with Trey, starting with Cytoscape, Nexo, Index, JActive Modules, um, let's see, uh, uh, NBS, the Netric-Based Stratification Work, um, all of these various tools, and I thought, well, gee, I'm really being tool-centric, and then there's a whole bunch of, like, science, real, live science that Trey has done. And then I decided, well, you know what? You all know him. I'll just introduce him. One thing to say, Trey Eidecker from UC San Diego, he gave the first keynote at um, this, at the uh, uh, NetBioSig, and he's a sailor. So what more can I say? Trey Eidecker.